This broadcast has been brought to you by friends and partners of Alfano Ministries International. Thank you for partnering with us today. Well, hey, everybody, we're back for the 7K Revelation podcast. This is Mark Alfano, your host, and I'm here with a very special guest. You know, it, the, our whole ministry is based on kingdom business and marketplace evangelism. I think a lot of times we get pigeonholed into being like just KBF, kingdom business, but in reality, we're marketplace evangelists. And God has get, commissioned me to go into uh, businesses and, and minister and to be a minister to business people and things like that. And so as a part of our podcast, um, we like to interview people who are either in ministry, full-time ministry, uh, or they're in business, then they're actually kingdom business people who are out there getting things done for the kingdom. Now, um, my next guest is Werner Stark, and um, he owns just an amazing company. We're going to get into that in a minute um, with ceramics and, and things like that. But before we do, I'd like to kind of intro the podcast. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, they say, Mark, why did you come up with the name The 7K uh, revelation podcast. What, what does that even mean? Well, it means is I'm going to bring up a scripture for you here. It says, uh, this is from Romans uh, 11, 3 and 5 in the NLT. It says, Lord, have they killed your prophets and torn down your altars? Am I the only one left? And now they're trying to kill me too. And you remember what God said? He said, no, 7,000 others have not bowed the knee to Baal. And so what we do in the 7K revelation is we reveal the 7,000 that have not bowed the knee to Baal. Now, another scripture that always comes up is Revelation uh, it's Revelation 12, 11, and it says, And they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. The, the King James Version says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, if you look at that scripture, it's one time in the Bible where two things are put together, the blood of the Lamb and your testimony, which means the power of your testimony ranks right up there with the blood of the Lamb. We all know the power of the blood and how important that is. Now, the last thing the Lord showed me, was Genesis 11, 5 and 6 in the NLT. It says, but the Lord came down. Now remember, this is they're building the Tower of Babel. And it's funny because people go, oh, wow, this is a crazy scripture for you to pull out. But I love it because he says they're building the Tower of Babel. The Lord came down and said, look at the city and the tower and the people we're building. And he says, look what the Lord said. He says, the people united, they all speak the, la the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible. And what the Lord showed me is, is that a couple things. Stereotypes are built whenever you don't know the other person. You know what I mean? If you're, seg if you're segregated to a certain community, um, for example, where I grew up, you know, it was mostly white people. You know, I didn't know any other, any other color, you know, colors. It was just white, you know. And um, as a result, there are prejudices and stereotypes as a young person. Uh, but then once I started to work and mix cultures and go to church around other people and meet other people, then all those, those division walls basically began to, to crumble and fall, you know. And so what I see is in the church, there's a lot of denominational lines that keep us separated. So the Lord said, look, I don't, it doesn't matter to me about your denomination um, if, as long as you do like what Paul said. Christ and him crucified. You know, we, we really teach, you know, just the basics. It's, it's knowing that Jesus Christ died for your sins and that he's coming back again. And he wants to fill you with his Holy Spirit and take you to a whole new level in life. And that's what we do. And so it's not about if you dunk or you dip or you do whatever when it comes to certain things like that. Hey, that's, that's a discussion for another day. And so Lord, show me that is, is to really get to know the person and their testimony. So Werner, welcome to the broadcast. And you have an amazing testimony we're excited to hear. The first thing I want to do is just jump right into it. You know, tell us a little bit about your younger days and how you, you know, got started out and then eventually came to know the Lord. All right. <clears throat> so first of all, I'm uh, born in Germany in uh, a long time ago, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> when I grew up as a kid, uh, I always a admired when the uh, we lived in a, in a small little village. And the Americans in the fall, they always had these uh, maneuvers. And so when they drove through town with their tanks and all their uh, heavy equipment, the Americans always threw out chocolate and, and all this kind of like Hershey chocolates and uh, Wrigley's, Birmingham, chewing gum. 
And uh, as a kid, I think that really attracted me to this country wow. <laughs> or to to America. And <clears throat> so anyway, so from from young years, and um, I always uh, wanted to come to America and loved America. Whatever happens in America, I mean, whatever I saw on TV and all this stuff always attracted me to America. So I would say from when I was like eight, nine years old, I always had this somewhere in my in my spirit to come to America. And uh, so years and years and years go by, years go by, years go by, dream never diminished. It always held on. <clears throat> and then uh, when I was like around 35, then uh, it seemed like, you know, everything is lost. I'm, I'm not gonna make it and all this stuff. And then it happened that um, um, I'm in the ceramic tile and stone business, and so we have like this this uh, magazines, which was put put out every month or so. And in in this one particular tile and stone magazines, they had an ad in there that they were looking in Huntsville, Alabama. They were looking for a master craftsman in ceramic tile and stone. And I happened to be a I used to be a, a uh, I started out very young in, in going into this trade and I became a master craftsman in Germany. That means you go to school for, for a year or so and then you, they teach you about uh, accounting, um, accounting and human resources and all the things, or many things you need to know about um, what you need to know in this business. It also... <clears throat> Uh, teach you how to draft and draw and come up with, with designs and, and all kinds of things. So anyway, so I have a degree as a master craftsman in Germany. And uh, so they were looking for a master craftsman. And <clears throat> so I answered on, uh, on their ad and uh, they called me first. Oh, actually they sent me back then was fax. They sent me a fax or whatever it was. And and um and and basically told me that uh, I'm a uh, applicant for this whole thing and there might be a chance as I that they hire me to come over to America and, and do a showroom but anyway so everything looks look good and then a week later they called me back or sent me another fax back and said I'm sorry we found somebody else hmm. <clears throat> and then um Two weeks later, so I, I gave up basically. So two weeks later, they called me again and said the other guy, uh, he dropped out. And, and so to me, that was already, I mean, back then I didn't know the Lord. <laughs> I mean, I know of him. and uh, But I know of now that was actually God working already in my life and, and had a plan for my life. Sure. <clears throat> and so anyway, so... They hired me to come over here. They didn't pay me a lot, but I, and back then I was already running my family company. Back then we did like $10 million in, in revenue back in Germany. And so my dad actually took, put me in charge of this company in Germany. <clears throat> and then so after they hired me, I told my dad, hey, I'm, I'm gonna go to America for four weeks or so. I said, what are you doing there? And he said, I'm just going to uh, build a showroom there. I didn't tell him the whole thing, but what I already had in my spirit. But anyway, so he released me, so I came over here. I already had the family, three kids, wife, three kids. <clears throat> and uh, so I come over here all by myself. And, and then at that time, I didn't do a lot of physical work anymore because when you run a $10 million company, you, you cannot go out and and do tile and stonework. You have to manage everything mm. going on behind the scenes. <clears throat> so anyway, so I, I passed everything on for the four weeks to my next younger brother uh, to run the show for a while. And then I came over here. And, um, and then, as I said, I didn't have a lot of... Uh, I mean, I still had the experience, but I didn't do any tile work for a long time. But so I started out basically with nothing and installed the entire showroom, which the, the, the people who, who, who hired me, they actually bought the showroom in a, from a German company. Yeah. And, um, and then they, they wanted me to install everything. And they had the thought already in, in the back of their mind that, 
if they, everything works out, they would hire me. <clears throat> so anyway, so I, uh, I, I was here like for four weeks and installed the showroom, finished everything up. And during that time, they noticed there was something a little bit different about that guy. And so they asked me, do you want to come over to, to America and, and work with us? And, uh, and without even a thought, I said, yes, I'll do that. And then, um, so anyway, so I went back to, to Germany. And then uh, uh, then they sent me, um, because none of the, my, that back then my business, my, the, the guy who hired me and his, his other, the, another, there was another guy involved, they had no, no idea about ceramic tile or anything like this. So they, they sent me faxes to do quotes from Germany. Wow. Germany, everything is metric, and over here everything is inches. So I had to learn inches and all this, the whole system. So they sent me the quotes. I figured it all out, sent them the quotes back, and then we got some jobs, uh, oddly enough. Yeah. But they didn't have anybody to could install the job. So they, at one time they hired a local sub, and it was a total mess. <clears throat> but anyway, so they were uh, pushing me to, to come over. So finally, I told my wife, you know, we're going to go to America. And then uh, my wife said, no, I'm not going to go to America. We had our house, we had our income, and everything was rosy. <clears throat> and then, uh, of course, she, like most women are, they don't, they don't want to leave what's good. And <clears throat> so anyway, so we had like this little argument, big argument. And, uh, and then uh, at one time, uh, she went to see her mother, uh, which is like 30 miles away. So every Saturday, she went to see her mother. <clears throat> and so she goes to her mother and said, Mom, uh, my husband, he wants to go to America, and I, I don't want to go with him. And then the, the mother said, you go where your husband goes. And that settled everything. So, <clears throat> But she still had some res reservations to, to come over here. So at one time I just packed her up in an airplane and we flew over here. And then I showed her the beautiful area of Huntsville, Alabama, all the lakes around here, the river, Tennessee River, all the woods. And it happened to be in the fall, where just the leaves dropped and all this. And, uh, and she loved it right in the beginning. So needless to say, <clears throat> then uh, they hired me to come over here for a short period. I mean, no, then, uh, then I came over here by myself for three months or so. And I had to go back for my oldest daughter's uh, communion. So I just went back like for two, three weeks or so. And then we settled everything in Germany. And then in, when I was like 85 or something like this, uh, the whole family followed me. <clears throat> and then we lived in a small, we had a little condo, lived in a little condo for half a year or so. And then we, we bought a little house. And then meanwhile, the company started up fairly decent and uh, then uh, in November 1989 uh, I believe a uh, tornado hit and so so during that time uh, we rearranged a bit when I came over here the after after I came back the second time when we come over here we rearranged a few things and made the show them a little bit more Americanized because before that it was all Germanish, <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff, because all the tile came from Germany. And then we, we looked around and <clears throat> we introduced more of the stone and, and other things and rearranged the showroom. And then I think in 89, uh, a tornado hit and wiped the whole company out. I mean, we were upstairs in the building, wiped everything out and uh, put us down to zero. And, and the thing is, when I come over here, I invested like $150,000, whatever I got out of my house, <clears throat> and uh, invested all in the, in the company. And so basically everything was lost. Mm -hmm. And we only got like, we had probably an investment of like maybe four or $500,000 in that showroom. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> during the, the tornado, uh, tornado wiped everything out. And then so we were down to zero. We got $85,000 from the entrance. Wow. So everything was like uh, dig in and work and work and work. 
and then so I went out. So at that time, we already had several several people who could who could do the work, train some people to could do the work, and then after the tornado, uh, business went down because the, nobody knew where we where we had to move from our home where we we had a nice place, and so we moved in a little office space like the. the a quarter of the size of what, what we had before, and all nice displays and anything like this. And so people didn't know where we were, so we, we didn't have a lot of business. So yeah. what we had, I, I let go of all the people I had, and then I did everything myself, starting like leaving like four four thirty five o'clock in the morning, coming back in the afternoon at 4, then did some office work, and then got up again the next morning at 4, and that, this went on for several several months. <clears throat> and there's it's some other stories in between that uh, the one job I was working on they didn't pay us on top of all this mm. and anyway it's a, that's a long story I, I could go on for, probably I could even write a book for <laughs> all these things how we how we started out mm. <clears throat> and then um, anyway so business picked picked back up again <clears throat> and then what what happened is several times um, I got to meet a lot of people, influential people, and we did some beautiful jobs. Well, because one of my philosophies was always when when you do something, like like God says, do it like you would do it unto the Lord. So when I, back then I didn't know all this, but anyway, that but this was still in my heart. And so when when I did a job, I designed it, and then I always put something extra in it. Hmm. So it's it's not like anybody else. I mean like the ordinary stuff. So, and I did all the extra. I did it for free. So, wow. and then the the word spread around and said, oh, if you need something really special, then you need to go to Ceramic Harmony. And then uh, and so we started out doing like some some nice back then, you know, like thirty eight years ago. So we did some well thirty five, thirty eight years ago. We we started to get some really nice jobs where other people couldn't even do it. <clears throat> and then it got to the um got to the point where we needed uh we we did some l detail work and and uh, for the detail work you know sawing little I mean they doing little roses and inlays and floors and stuff like this for and so I bought a little bandsaw where he cut stone with it. And uh, so we sat there with this little bandsaw. Oh my God! Then, meanwhile, I had the guys in the shop. Then we started the fabrication shop. I mean, b because uh, in this area we didn't have any any. I mean, back then there was nobody who did granite countertops and anything marble and slabs, and there was nothing like this in in this area. And <clears throat> so anyway, so but then we got some some jobs with marble and all these things. And um, I did, we didn't have a shop back then, so I had uh, became bef uh, befriended with a guy in Atlanta who had a shop. And so <clears throat> we drove to Atlanta all the time. My son and I, when he was little, we jumped in the truck and go to Atlanta, pick up the marble or whatever whatever they cut for us, and then put uh, brought it over here and, and put it in houses. <clears throat> and then it got to the point where we got to do some inlay work and all this stuff. And then I started out with a little bandsaw, as I said, and uh, cutting pieces by hand. And it took a long time. I said, Lord, that has to stop. I have to find something else. And it happened. Uh, I got hooked up with years before that with a guy who had a, a water chat. So I still had his address and <clears throat> so I called him, and he was he wasn't working for this company anymore. So they gave me the address from the the, the, the new phone number of the guy, and I called the guy and said, "Hey man, I I need the." He was actually from Richard was his name. He was from South Africa, and uh, so I called him and said, "Man, I'm, I'm I'm I need the water chat. Do you still have water chat connections? All this stuff." All this stuff, and he said, hey, "It just happened. I started my own business, and I'm selling used water jets." Wow! <laughs> so that was like 30 years ago, probably. And then I said, "How much is one?" And so he gave me a price, and I said, "Okay, send me one." Anyway, so I signed a contract with him. He sent me the a water jet. So we were the first company here in this town uh, with a water jet, <clears throat> where you could do intricate uh, marble work and all these things. And um, and then the business picked up more and more because of the uh, uniqueness what what we can do with all with, with the machinery, 
and <clears throat> and then it ended up that we didn't go to Atlanta anymore, so we started our own fabrication shop, and uh, and uh, and then it developed and developed and developed, and then uh, our first water jet uh, was out today, up uh, outdated, and then we bought another one. We bought another one. Meanwhile, we have like a five-axis water jet where you can do basically any anything with it. And then also in our shop right now, we got like CNC machines. And so we are like in this area, we are probably the only shop we can do anything like really, really, really unique. And so the <clears throat> so back to uh, probably 20 years ago, uh, uh, close to 20 years ago, um, sometimes I... Uh, there's like several uh, uh, suppliers we had, like plumbing places we had here. We had to go to occasionally and talk to the people. And one of the, the guys in one of the plumbing places, the owner actually from the plumbing place, he said, do you know Jesus? Hmm. And I said, yeah, I, I know Jesus uh, from, uh, from church. I'm a Catholic. And said, uh, did you ever commit your life to Jesus or does Jesus live in your heart? And I said, um, I don't know about about all of this. And then, and so he he talked to me about Jesus, and I thought, okay, what he whatever he's talking about. And so I left this place, and then another place walked in there and said, Do you know about Jesus? And I said, No, not really, but uh, I don't need Jesus. I'm I'm fine, or something like this. And uh, <clears throat> but anyway, so. And then all of a sudden, my brother calls me from Germany, and uh, he he said uh, some basically he said the same thing. Uh, what happened to me? He told me his story first. So what happened to me? He said, uh, my my sister, our sister, she dropped off a, a pamphlet from the full gospel for businessmen in mm-hmm. in his office. And back then, the things weren't doing that great in the company, in the German company. He he actually is the one who took over after I left. So things weren't going doing so great great in the company. And my sister, she was always the saint in the family, even though I mean she knew Jesus and everything, and uh, but she never wanted us to do anything bad or all this. And and we for us it was like okay, little insurance fraud here and there. That was all normal. And then you know like. Anyway, it's another story. So she uh, got this uh, little pamphlet from the business, uh, Full Gospel for Business. Many people, maybe some people know of them. They were started here in, in the United States <clears throat> from uh, Darius Shikarian, uh, Demon Shikarian. And uh, they had chapters all over the world. And so they had this chapter in Germany and they put out this, this pamphlet and it says, Management by the Holy Spirit. And uh, so anyway, so my my brother didn't want to sign up, but my sister told him, you know, things don't go so good, and this is all for free. Uh, you can go there, it doesn't cost you a bit. And he said, okay, finally he went there. And then so the first day when they when they started out, <clears throat> they had like praise and worship, and they raised their hands and praising God and all this stuff. And then, and so my brother said, oh, oh boy, I, being a Catholic, he said, oh boy, I can't handle this. So he wanted to leave, and that evening wanted to leave. So at the end of the first day, the seminar leader or whatever you want to call him, he said, you know, the Holy Spirit can even wake you up in the morning. And so <clears throat> so my brother said, before he went to bed, he said, okay, Holy Spirit, I take you by your word, and uh, uh, I ask, um, 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 ask you to wake me up tomorrow morning at 7.30 sharp. Anyway, so he went to bed next morning, 7.33. Wow. He did a sit-up in bed. I mean, he just, boom, he sat, sat up in bed. And he looked at his watch, and it was 7.33. And he said, you just missed it. Oh, no. <laughs> and then the wife looks at him and said, did you know that your wife go, uh, your watch goes three minutes ahead? No, that's so funny. <laughs> anyway, needless to say, so he went to the... Um, uh, went to the had an altar, had an altar call the next day. He gave his life over to the Lord, and then he totally changed. Then he sends me these pamphlets and calls me, sends me texts. Oh, back then it was uh, faxes, 
and whatever it took calls me and said you know you need to you need to get to know jesus and need to turn life over to jesus and all this stuff and, and then he sent me these pamphlets they were printed in in america were translated into german and so he sent me the german version back to america and they came out with one every every month they came out with a little pamphlet uh, in the german version and so anyway so <clears throat> i got these pamphlets uh, stacks of them. He sent me the older ones all the way up to date. Wow. And so I got the stacks of these pamphlets. And then, so I just, you know, I read it and I thought, oh, well, that's all crap. You know, but could, <laughs> that's all like, how can people, you know, do all this? And then, uh, but every time they had like these testimonies and like back then it was like Reggie White, a football player mm -hmm. and, and other famous people who gave their life over to the Lord. And, and then I got to the point, you know, it's like, shoot, they cannot all be wrong with what they're talking in there. Yeah. And as a Catholic, everything is like, ev I mean, back then it was like that. Everything not Catholic is all a cult. Right. <clears throat> and um, so anyway, so he sent me these temp pamphlets. I started to read it. And at one day, it's a little funny, maybe to some people. Anyways, <laughs> I'm sitting on the commode, I'm reading these pamphlets, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit came upon me, and, and I heard this in my spirit. I mean, back then I didn't even know what it was, but I, I, I had this in my, in my spirit that uh, there's something going on. And then, uh, so I read the, the whole, the, 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 the uh, where do we get saved? What's it called? Uh, uh, yeah, right. The, the, like the soul winning script. The soul winning script. Uh, at the end of it, everyone had a, a script in at the end where it could turn your life over to the, like to, to the type track type, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, so I got off the commode and I go over to my bed and I knelt down in, in front of the bed. And then it was like a movie going in front of my eyes from all the things God has saved me. I had car accidents up to my 18th birthday. I had seven car, uh, car accidents and totaled like three or four cars mm -hmm. back then. I always like to go a little faster than yeah. normal people do. <laughs> and so I totaled actually three or four cars. And so he, he showed me this. And at one time, that, that, was, that still sticks out to this day. At one time, I was on a job site and there was a truck, one of our company trucks, was halfway stuck in the mud and had to get some momentum. And uh, so he has to <clears throat> had like maybe did like 15 hours a, mi a mile an hour or so. He comes around this corner and there was like a two by four, oh, four by four actually, leaning across the garage door where I'm standing in. And so the truck hit that four by four and that four by four went like in front of my, f I mean, I could feel that to this day, I still feel the wind on my nose when that uh, four by four uh, went by my head, or missed my head. And then when it hit the, f the, the ground, there was like a, a two by 12 laying there and it split that two by 12. Wow. So I'm pretty sure, I mean, I know that uh, th that would have killed me. That was just one of the incidents he showed me like in a movie. And then at the end of the movie, I said, got to a point where I just totally, you know, basically I said at the end of the movie, so. Father, from now on, you're the Lord of my life, mm. and mm. and <laughs> from that day on, everything, everything changed in my life, and then my whole family. So I was the first one, you know, and then my whole family thought I was totally nuts because all I was talking about <laughs> Jesus and and all these things, and then it happened that my brother came over and we did the. Um, uh, went on a skiing trip to Colorado, and my brother was already safe back in Germany. And then um, uh, we went on this skiing trip, and he had, first of all, he brought his other pamphlets with him, but he also brought the Bible with him. So on this whole trip, you know, we were reading the Bible, and he told me you need to read this and this and this and this, and, and that started to, my desire got even worse. <laughs> And then uh, coming back from the trip, there was just my wife wasn't with us. It was just my older daughter and and my son was with us, and and my brother and bro uh, sister-in-law. And uh, and so, anyways, that stirred something up in really stirred something up in my heart. 
and then uh, <coughs> my desire for for God was getting stronger and stronger and stronger and then my brother he sends me back then he sends me all these Christian music tapes they were recorded in a basement in Germany and they sounded like horrible and uh, so he sent me these tapes and I said I'm <clears throat> I mean, that, that was before the trip um, with my uh, to the the skiing trip. So he sent me these tapes, and I put them in my t CD player, uh, uh, not CD, uh, tape player. Yeah. And I put it in tape player, and I thought, oh, oh, I cannot listen to this. So, <clears throat> so I put, took it back out, and I put another one in, like Led Zeppelin or whatever it was back then. <laughs> da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. <laughs> and I put that stuff in, and um, that sounded great. Anyway, so then our skiing trip came along, and I got that really saved. And um, then on the way back, I mean, after I got back, then all of a sudden I had this this desire. I couldn't listen to that, that stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I had this desire to listen to Christian music. Uh, <clears throat> so they had the Christian radio station here. And so I was looking for all whatever I could get, like Christian music, like back then it was Ray Bolts and, mm -hmm. and all the all those people. And uh, so I listened to this. So I popped these uh, the these tape uh, those old tapes in from Germany, and all of a sudden they sounded like honey to my ears. Wow. And I couldn't listen to this other stuff anymore. I mean, it's not that I couldn't, but I didn't have any desire to listen sure. to it anymore. <clears throat> so I started out listening all to Christian u music and listening to a Christian radio station. And then <clears throat> they had this one commercial in it or advertisement in it for from uh, Mario Marillo in Decatur, which is like 20, 30 miles away from here. And there was uh, uh, Assemblies of God Church. And then, <clears throat> so back then I, I, was, I was the only one who had the desire for Jesus. And so anyway, so I heard this, and uh, and I had in my spirit, I, I would just need to go there. And then um, I come home, there was like a Thursday evening or Friday evening. I come home, walked in the house, and I was a r pretty rough guy in my, in my, to my wife always. And uh, so I come home and I said, we're going to go to Decatur to this, uh, there's this Mario Murillo, and they're talking about healing being sanctified and all kinds of stuff and we're going to go there together and she said i'm not going there so we had this big argument so finally i kind of tied her up in the in the car and, <laughs> <laughs> and we went didn't talk a word all the way over there walking into the church and then uh people talking to us you know shaking our hands and said how you doing it's so nice that you came here and i never experienced anything this in a catholic church i mean you over here but in germany never and uh so they walked in and they greeted us and then and i, I wanted to always wanted to say get away from me leave me alone and uh so anyway so we walked in and then we pushed us to to a little corner on the right under the stairs and then we stood there like locks in a, in the woods you know, hand folded like this. So, okay, <clears throat> and um, then they started uh, praise and worship. And I have to say, to this day, it's still my. That's what really caught me, uh, the the praise and worship. So anyway, so they started praise and worship, and it was all these Jesus songs, and then every it started out every time the word Jesus popped up. <laughs> Even now, the Lord Jesus popped up and Stein stuff. Oh, bawling like a little baby, my t shirt soaking wet. And then all of a sudden, I had this desire, you know, raise your hands. So I popped up my hands. And, uh, and then I thought, okay, I don't care anymore what other people think. Because I thought actually that all these people in there, they're all nuts. Yes. And I thought there might be some people, customers, I was they, they recognized me. They thought, you know, there's another nutty guy. Yeah. And then I thought, that, <clears throat> anyway, so I raised up my hand and bawling. And the holy, back then I didn't even know what it was. I was just bawling and had this, this fire and this oil over me and all this, whatever. And this love of God uh, falling on me. And I thought, now I don't care anymore what people say. <clears throat> I raised up my hands. And I don't care what my wife says next to me. And all of a sudden, I just glanced to the left. Boom! And her hands went up. Wow. 
And at the end, they had an altar call and they said, whoever wants to be saved and sanctified, come to the front. And then, uh, so I, I didn't know that I was saved, you know, back then. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so my wife grabs me by the arm. <laughs> so we go down there, I got saved again. And then everything got more in, intense. And um, then we both had this, this fire. And uh, <clears throat> but my wife didn't still want to. She didn't want to leave the Catholic Church, and uh, and, I, and I couldn't handle it anymore. And uh, so I was um, we attended. So I found a church here. Well, actually, then I attended to the uh, um, became member of the Full Gospel for Businessmen nice. chapter here in in town. And uh, and then my wife. Uh, it, it's a little back and forth here, but anyway. So I I found a church. A uh, spirit-filled church here in town, and then uh, my wife didn't want to come with me, and then uh, finally, and even some of the kids went with me, and then so finally she gave in, and so we jo joined that church, and then uh, we <clears throat> and then uh, uh, I went to several of the actually the first time I went to a full gospel for businessmen meeting, my wife went with me, and then uh, so they had the sp the speaker here from. Um, 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 somewhere in Georgia, uh, um, uh, some uh, some town in in Georgia. So I had this the speaker coming in and talking about business mm. and what what God can do or what He did, what God did for His business in in His life in the business. And then so after he was done with um, with uh, with his preaching, he said, "If anyone wants to come forward and get prayer." Uh, just come forward, and so we are sitting again next to each other up against the wall, <laughs> and then uh, so he pointed to us and said, "You guys want to? Are you guys married?" He said, "Yeah." You guys want to come forward, and uh, so we look, uh, look, we looked at each other. You see, talking to us. Anyway, so we both went forward, and then uh, so <clears throat> he laid hands on me. So he he touched me, not laid hands on my forehead, nothing. And then he uh, goes over to my wife, and before he even touched her head, boom, she went down in the floor. <laughs> and uh, and I thought, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, what are we gonna do? And she laid there like she was dead. Mm. And then I looked around and looked at all the other people around, and everybody had like like they had the they, they almost they they enjoyed it, joined it. So. And I looked around and I said, well, what are we going to do? I wanted to call the, the ambulance <laughs> to pick her up. And then everybody said, oh, don't worry about it. She's fine. She's fine. So anyway, so I walked back to my seat and sat there five minutes, ten minutes, or whatever time goes by. All of a sudden she stood up and came over, sat next to me, not saying a word. And so anyway, so that's when everything kind of started out. And then this desire to get more of God and have an encounters with God got greater and greater and greater. And then uh, at several times he closed down the business and went to the, the, one of the first trips we did where we had a real, another encounter with God was a Benny Hinn meeting in, in Memphis. So I also I heard, it, heard it on the radio, Christian radio. And so we closed the shop and we, we traveled to Memphis, Memphis, which is like four hours from here. So we got there at five o'clock and that was in the, in the arena in downtown. And so we got there by five o'clock and there were people in line and you couldn't even, get, actually the building was still closed, but there were wow. people waiting outside to, to get in line. And, and then they had a tent put up next to it, which held like 2,000 people. So we got in line and we just barely made it in. And so we sat way up there in the bleachers, like in the upper rows. And and there were like 18,000 people yeah. in there. And then the, the service started and goes on and then they started to sing. And that, that's always my, I, I love to sing and, and worship God. And so they, they uh, played this hallelujah. Hallelujah. And everybody knows that song. Yeah. Anyway, so... They play that song, so we all standing up and, and raising our hands and singing hallelujah. And all of a sudden, I noticed all this, this chair uh, popping down the, all around through the arena, like three, 4,000 chairs and people, I see you know, people dropping down in 
like it's almost like a wave mm. and all these people dropping down in their chairs and then I looked to the left boom and my wife like next to me she dropped down and, and the chair and went in between the chair her glasses fell off and she got stuck in that beer stained concrete in there <clears throat> and then uh, uh, so anyway so uh, uh, one of my son's friend was sitting next to her and I was on the right side. So two people tried to pick her up. We couldn't pick her up. She was seemed to be too heavy. Wow. So I just left her down there for another five, ten minutes or whatever. And then finally she, she came to and then she got upset on her chair. And then nobody talked on the way home. I mean, not one word. She just sat there, and he could feel, you know, the back, back then, you know, I got a little bit more, I, I, I knew a little bit more about the Holy Spirit. So, And so on the way home, I mean, you could see that the Holy Spirit was working in her. And he actually told her, uh, imagine all these 18,000 people. If any one of those 18,000 people would talk to another pe person about their experience, how many people who could uh, experience anything like this. So that, that was our first experience, and then we went to several other other meetings. We were so set and fire for, for God and wanted to get more and more of him. And then the Brownsville revival started. And, uh, and so we sent our daughter down there and, and one other of our kids and every time they came back, uh, I mean, they were so on fire for God. It's, it's unbelievable. And so <clears throat> I went down and um, uh, we set something up ourselves. And um, uh, that's actually the story I told you. Uh, so, should I tell the whole story with that guy? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. So anyway, so there's a, we had a job site down there in, uh, in Destin. Mm -hmm. And then the Brownsville Revival was over in Pensacola. And so I dropped the kids off, and then they had some friends with them, dropped them off at 6 o'clock in the morning. There were already lines, like, lines lined up for people going into the church. And then um, and, and you could feel the presence actually in the parking lot. Like 6 o'clock in the morning, you felt the presence of God. <clears throat> and people singing, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like never experienced anything like this. So anyway, so we go to our job and a uh, job site and there's one of my guys was working there and <clears throat> so i told the guy hey we're going to go to this revival in in brownsville you want to go with us first they didn't want to go so and i said hey i'll take you over there and drop you back off and so he went with us and then <clears throat> we got into the into the into the uh, church actually we didn't get in into the main thing Actually, with that guy, that's another yeah. story. But something is so uh, cross, crossing over, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's another story. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's I, I get, don't want to get into all the details. It's too long. But anyway, so we we got in. We didn't get into the main sanctuaries. Right. So we stood in the cafeteria, and then at that time they had uh, baptism. So they had people who were saved at the revival, and so every four weeks. They called like 10 people or so to come down and get baptized if, uh, baptized if they wanted to. And so they came down. <clears throat> there were 10 people coming down and get baptized. So we, as I said, we didn't get in, into the main sanctuaries. So we stood actually like five feet away from the big screen. We, we had to look around like this. And, uh, <clears throat> and everything shoulder to shoulder in the cafeteria. There were probably 3,000 people in a place which also only holds like 2,000. And so we stood in there in front of the big screen TV, and then they had the, the whole service, and then they had the baptism. And in the baptism, it was like unbelievable. People walked up to the water, uh, and then they started this. Remember, the, they had this jerking going on? Oh, yeah. And so I had this, these people walking up to the water. As they get closer to the water, that jerking got worse and worse and worse, or better and better. And then when they got into the water, some some of them they had like two muscle guys standing in the water some of the people that just went under the water yeah, and gosh. then they fished them back out and they gave their testimony and just listen to their testimony the presence of god comes on on people i mean i was standing again in front of the the big screen tv bawling like a little baby with the presence of god coming upon us and so anyway they, fin they finished up the <clears throat> 
the the uh, water water baptism, and then after the water baptism, uh, they had people minister to to the people who were there, and had like assigned ministers with a tag on it, so nobody does anything stupid. And then, uh, so the minister they walked to the to the, the to the crowd, and just they couldn't even get close to it, so they just raised up like this and and, and put hands on, on on people, and so and people dropping down left and right. So he walks up to us. I mean, it was like three, four people away from us. And again, so this minister, he just touched my wife in the forehead a little bit, and she went down on the floor. Wow. And there was like, I had to push people away and keep them from stepping on my wife, on her hair or her body or anything like this. I pushed them away, and I'm standing there. And then all of a sudden, she did sit-ups, mm. legs straight out, I mean, not bend or anything like this. And she went like, bum, 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 bum. She did probably 50 sit-ups. Wow. And you see, back then she had like a very tight T-shirt on and a little skinnier than she is now. <laughs> and anyway, so you could see every muscle. Wow. And she did this like 50, um, probably 50 times or so. And I was just standing there in awe. And I thought, how can this happen? You know, it's like unbelievable. Yeah. <clears throat> and so during that time, uh, she she was afraid of everything mm -hmm. and uh, for instance when we in mountain roads or so when I drove or so she sits in the car screaming mm -hmm. because she was afraid when the kids did something she was afraid the kids get hurt and all this stuff or injured and all this stuff so God took that completely away no more fear uh, that kind of fear exactly. and then uh, <clears throat> also she had migraine headaches Every four weeks, mm -hmm. she stayed in the room. We had to have the curtains closed and stayed in the room. Migraine headaches gone. Wow. It started to come back again like once or twice, but then we knew how to uh, rebu uh, rebuke the enemy. So she rebuked the enemy and it never came back That's to this day, healed. That's like 25, 30 yeah, years well, ago. That's yeah. Anyway, so that brought us closer and closer uh, to the Lord. Meanwhile, back to the business. Business was, was. Uh, did I tell the story with the tornado? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so business was was doing pretty good and everything going well. And then, of course, when you're in business, there's always like ups and downs and ups and downs. Sure. So I appreciate the ups. I didn't appreciate the downs <laughs> uh, too much. Nobody does. Yeah. Let me ask you a quick question, just uh, on a side note. Ceramic Harmony, so where did you come up with that name? Was it already there, or did you make it? That was actually, before I got here, they already had that name made up. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty neat, because it still fits in with the flow of what you do. You know, what, one thing is, is like there is harmony uh, here, there's peace here, there's, you know, the Holy Spirit is here, so it fits, you know, what you do very well. One thing I do love is how the kingdom business side uh, it's really, you're a testimony of that. My dad was the president of his full gospel businessmen's chapter, so you know I'm basically a Christian as a result oh. of that same organization. Um, and obviously, my ministry is really based on marketplace evangelism and going out into the marketplace and and you know winning souls and ministering to people in their own business. And so it's just amazing to me is how 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 that impacted you, and now it's going out and it's spreading into other people. You know, so by, that that had a the, huge by thing. By the way, I probably yeah. never told you that. I'm actually have a license as a minister in the marketplace. Look at that. Yeah. So he's a, a marketplace minister. It's exactly what we do, right? And so, wow, that's amazing. So now, as you go, now you guys are saved. You're being led by the Holy Spirit. You're feeling the move of God. Uh, obviously, in your business now, you know, uh, was there, like you talked about, the tornado comes, totally wipes you guys out, but through, you know, perseverance, you've overcome, uh, you know, you're, you're growing, you've added new equipment. Um, you know, what is uh, Ceramic Harmony like, you know, today? So now you're on the flip side of all this stuff. You know, what, what is it? What's the ideal customer? Because obviously we're here to promote your business as well. Um, you know, what is the ideal customer for, for Ceramic Harmony? Like, who, who are you looking for? So, you no. Know, first of all, years and years and years ago, uh, uh, Mark and I, we talked a little bit uh, today about uh, what uh, uh, prophecies and things, what God speaks to us. And years and years and years ago, uh, God told me, uh, you will do jobs you have never dreamed of. Mm. 
and then also I always refer to uh, Psalm uh, Proverbs uh, eighteen sixteen, where he said he if, with your talents God will bring you before great men, and so. First of all, God gave me these talents. So I give him all the glory for whatever happens in here. When people come to our showroom, they just look around. And some of them are, well, many of them, most of them are amazed, you know, what's, what's going on, what, what we do here. I yeah. actually had, <clears throat> not too long ago, we did a, a job for a pretty wealthy person here in town. And, uh, and so they, they had a designer from, from Nashville, uh, uh, from Memphis, and so that designer from Memphis comes in, and he looks around, and he said, "I've never, I've been in a lot of high-end showrooms. I've never seen any, anything like this." That's amazing. So, yeah. so he he walks around and says, "Can I take pictures?" So he walks around to the whole showroom to picture, 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 yeah. picture, picture. <clears throat> so that's a kind of what I, I give credit to God because first of all, He gave me the talents to do all this, and then uh, and also gave us. The, I mean the the ways of doing it. So he always uh, gives us a st- uh, brings us a step ahead of the competition. Mm, that's great. So he brings in like for instance machinery. There's nobody around here who has anything machinery wise what we have. And also he supports us for instance like money wise. <clears throat> that's one one of them stories. Like uh, a couple of years ago, we always buy the newest equipment. But we we still have to finance it, and uh, and so our equipment we have right now it's probably close to a million million dollars of of equipment. But the thing is, the equipment goes bad. Sure. Right. And uh, after so many years, and so uh, it was like three four years ago, uh, I got to a point like one of the machines didn't work as well anymore. We had to invest some more money, and then the other machine wasn't that great anymore. And so I said, Father, what are we going to do? You know, I don't have the money to to buy all that stuff and and fi- or, or finance it. Or I probably won't even get money to finance it. And he said, Son, uh, you buy whatever machinery you need, and I make a way that you can get it. Wow. So I bought like I actually bought two machines that's seven hundred thousand and and a new truck according to what he told me, do whatever it takes. And uh, not, I didn't have to pay one penny down wow. and got all the money, you know. And, um, you know, some people, like in, the, in my family even, you know, most of my kids, they're all very, very conscious when it comes to money. They want to save money and all this stuff. And then uh, they always tell, you know, if you don't have the money, don't buy it. But... I learned that God doesn't care about that money. He cares about what's going on in the future and how we can handle the future with what we have. And if it requires uh, to borrow money, he makes a way that we can get the money to uh, get the task uh, accomplished. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of times in business, people think, oh, that's bad, that's bad, but there's good debt. Uh, as long as it's taking you to a place and you're not, you know, you're not a slave right. to it, you know. And I mean, that, to me, the, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Because he he told me, first of all, he told me, get the machines and I get you the money without uh, paying any That's good. any down payments down. But anyway, so so he told me that you will do jobs you have never dreamed of. And then it ended up that, <clears throat> so our, our um, target group is basically... Uh, uh, customers uh, where we can do uh, unique and work which nobody can do and so it sets the customer apart mm. so when they go someplace they don't see the same thing anymore and that requires high-end customers customers who can afford what we do and so that brought us to unbelievable jobs where we can do like it's there's no limit yeah. and people come to us because of the anointing God has put on me to oh, on this company and me because I'm the head of the company so he put the anointing on me and then he lets it show through the talents he has given me in, 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 this, in this area and so people come in and they want to have something very unique and they're willing to pay uh, a, a, an extra price for what we do yeah right yeah it's amazing i mean what i've seen here at the showroom just like the look of the room and, and the way you designed it and the outside even the outside of the building it's like it's like coming to a, a 
reminds me of like going to Disney or something, you know, with like a set, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not just stuff hanging on the wall, but it's like you've literally designed a showroom, uh, you know. And another thing too is, is like, you know, you have a real live family run business too, yeah. you know. So, I mean, they do have other employees, but, you know, there's that other, you know, uh, the component of it is, is that it's, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're the head of the family, but you're also the, you're the, some of the, your kid's boss and stuff like that. So, I mean, how do you handle dynamics of, of, you know, mixing family and business sometimes, you know? Yeah, that's, uh, that all has to do, uh, first of all, to me, it's the most important thing that uh, our kids know God. Yeah, for sure. And uh, all of our kids know God, I mean, know Jesus. Yeah. And not just God, they know, and they're filled with, the, I mean, not filled, not all of them are filled with the Holy Spirit, but they are, they have Jesus living inside of them and, right. and they're, they're saved. So that's a most important thing. And then uh, what we do in, in our family, to keep the family together, we have every Sunday, we bring the family together and uh, have dinner together. Mm. And that's like Jesus did this all the time. When he went someplace, they always ate. Yeah, break bread, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's so important, you know. It's it's um, and plus, I'm sure it's a lot of your roots and things like that too. Yeah, you know, with yeah. The culture. Well, well, growing up in Europe, that's a common thing. Sure, you know? right. Yeah. And it's family's not, tight. You know, people yeah. live live close yeah. and work together and things like that. Yeah. Where you know, in the U- U.S., we're kind of fragmented when it comes to family and everybody lives everywhere and does their own thing. But I like that, you know. So it's a true, you know, true family run, you know, business, you know. So one thing I like to ask people, you know, obviously it's um, part of our broadcast is. You know, what's some advice you you would give to somebody like, you know, getting started out in a business like this? I mean, obviously, you've been through, you know, through a lot of different challenges and things like that. If you were to go back in time, uh, find your younger self and say, give give me a couple key pieces of wisdom that you would tell that person just getting started. uh, I mean, the the first thing is and back then, as I said earlier, uh, is get to know. God or uh, have an encounter with the Holy Spirit and get to know God because once he got that then he guides you and, and leads you as it's uh, said in John 16 13 when he the spirit of truth has come he guide you into all truth and show you things to come so when, if I would have had the Holy Spirit right in the beginning things probably would have worked out even better but then uh, I knew or oh, I know now that God has his hand, had his hands on me all my life when I still was a little kid because he's the one actually who sent us to this country. So that's number one. And then the number two to me is have a, a, when, you, when you get married, first of all, find the right woman. And that's also led by God or ask God, if you, especially if you, if you know God already, then let God guide you in that and find the right woman. In my case, again, uh, I, I found the right woman, but back then I didn't know it was God that, uh, who put us together. Right. And that to me is like the number one thing. And then the next, a uh, number second thing, <laughs> and uh, the next thing is, <clears throat> Uh, and I get this all the time, as it says in the, <clears throat> in Acts uh, two, is that as they were all in one accord, have an agreement in everything you do. And because if you don't have the agreement, most of the time things go sideways. And then, so those are my my may, is my number my advice okay. to to any anybody. And forget everything else about the business. If you seek the kingdom first, as is said in in uh, Matthew six thirty three, if you seek the kingdom first, he will give you all the things. That's amazing. I actually wrote that down on after you said number one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Seek <laughs> you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added on to you. Amen. And I mean, you can combine this because if you had have God first, then it would have happened. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and what I love about you guys is you you're literally running after the things of God. You know, I mean, I met you down at our church, the River Church in Tampa Bay, and uh, you know, and also through Kingdom businesses and things that we've done together in, in that realm. Um, you know, and now here we are. You know, this was a completely side trip for us. You know, we were doing ministry work uh, 
through Maryland and Pennsylvania and Tennessee, and then a few doors closed because of the uh, the flooding, you know, from Hurricane Aline. And um, and I contacted uh, Werner and said, hey, you know, we'd like to you know just uh, stop by and see you while we're driving through, you know. Little did we know that uh, next hurricane, Martin or whatever his name is, hit hit our house in Tampa, and uh, and so now we don't have any power and things like that. So hey, let's just stay. Uh, we extended our trip, and and you know through the grace of God and an open um, you know vessel, he said, hey, why don't you come and minister here at our business? So what do you feel? And I'm going to put you on the spot because, you know, as a plug into Alfano Ministries International. You know, what do you feel that was there any added value for us to come in here and uh, to be a part of what you do oh. in your in your ministry and in your workplace? I mean, uh, I wouldn't call it added value. <laughs> what it actually did, it changed uh, lots of people's life. Mm. People got saved, in, and that's what I just said earlier. It's about knowing God first. And so the first thing what happened is when we had the business, when I mean, first of all, it was all designed by God that uh, that you guys came here. Yeah. Everything worked out, and and it, it just when I think about it, I just feel the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. you know, like it, it just everything lined up with what what God had in mind. Yeah. And then the the fruit is the main thing coming yeah. out of it. So the fruit came out of it that many of our people actually got rededicated uh, their life to Jesus, and uh, several of them got baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire. <laughs> <clears throat> Even to today we had a meeting with one of the, my salespeople, and I know from now this is this week with you guys is the week of breakthrough in this company. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, it's funny because when we first started in ministry, I said, where do we fit? You know, because, you know, we are, uh, we're different. You know, we don't do the, the average, you know, thing. And the Lord showed me, it's like your ministry isn't really going to be in the pulpit, uh, which we do a lot of uh, churches. But what it leads to is to be able to connect with business people in their business and uh, to be to literally be that front end of the sword and, and get into the places that the church can't get into, you know, in most cases. And uh, what I love about what we've seen here is the willingness as the owner of the company to, to invite us in uh, and say, have your way and, and minister to the people. And then also the hunger of the people to be ministered to. Uh, and like he said, you know, it's, I believe as well, is what comes out of this uh, is going to be a next level uh, move for the entire company. So, you know, that's who we are. That's what we do is Alfano Ministries International, but also Ceramic Harmony. I mean, hey, you know what? You might not be in a place right now financially to say, oh, I'm going to have a custom built, you know, house, but maybe you know somebody who knows somebody. I mean, this this podcast goes all over the place and reaches a ton of people. And so, you know, if you're looking for something that literally nobody else has, I mean, I, I walk through the showroom and I see the drawings because what, what it is is the Holy Spirit actually downloads, you know, takes his talent, downloads the vision. He's able to, with a pen and paper, literally draw it out. But then not only just draw it out, but then to execute with a team of excellence um, and, and also have sources all over the world for the, for the uh, stone. Some of it's like, you know, they go to Italy and these other countries and they hand select the, the look of everything. Uh, but on top of that, there's not just the, the natural stone, but it's some of these other man-made products and different designs. So they're really, you guys are really on the cutting edge of what you do. And uh, yeah, and I and I mean, so, you know, if this isn't for everybody, you know, like I've interviewed people like I interviewed Mark Mickick, who has Lighthouse Electric. And uh, he said, we're not for everybody. You know, they're 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 doing electric in hospitals and stadiums and stuff. So they're not going to go change a light bulb in somebody's house. You know what I mean? And so he's like that. You know, this is it's not going to be your average install of, of your local bathtub type of thing. But I tell you what, the work that you guys do, I mean, this is next level and it's of excellence and Thank quality. You. And the other thing what I love is, is, you know, a lot of times people feel like kingdom business is just for the business person to fund the harvest, but then to stay out of the way. I always say that's you're not going to get off the hook that easy. You know, if you come to my ministry and if you hear me preach, I always tell business people, look, I'm a business guy. I've been raised in business. You're not going to get off the hook just by giving. Giving is one component. 
that sets your your finances free. That gives you seed in the ground. That 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 redeems your money, which I think we all need to be doing that. Um, but on the other side of it is, is he's a lighthouse. So this business is a lighthouse. Like you can't get within fifty feet of Werner and not hear about the Holy Spirit and fire. And you can't go near him without feeling the anointing and the presence of God on him. And so that's a true marketplace ministry where the church where the you know there's been a birthing uh, out in the marketplace. You know, you go. Yeah. He goes to the upper room, and he gets the touch of God. But then he doesn't contain it to the upper room, and he doesn't just sit back and write a check and say, "Okay, you go off and do the dirty work while I sit back and behind my desk." No, he's out there. Not only is he funding the harvest and he's funding the ministry, he's he's putting the value where the value is, is due. But he's also been a, a major part of it, and souls have been changed, and lives have been changed, and people have been healed. I mean, he told me stories about opportunities to be in people's houses that, that that are terminal or have have cancer or whatever and he lays hands on people and and people getting healed and things like that and so that's really what we're all about you know that's that's the real marketplace evangelism of, of what we teach and um and you know right now i feel led by the holy spirit is that you know if you're driving in your car today and you're and you're listening to this and you're and you're you know you're asking yourself, boy, how do I get that? You know, how do I get what these guys are talking about and take my business to a new level? Um, well, first off, first and foremost is, is you have to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's number one. You know, that's that's step one, and it's not and it's not like a one and done. You know, and so you know the Bible says that each and every one of us has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death, and that wage doesn't change no matter what the economy does. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And all you have to do is call upon the name of Jesus and you're saved. And so I'm going to give you there as a listener an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior first and foremost. So I'm just going to say a quick blessing over you as you're driving along in your car or you're sitting there at your computer and you're watching this podcast. You know, I'm going to say a blessing that God blesses each and every person who's watching today. I pray that you just fill them, you anoint them, that you give them, that you bless them beyond their wildest dreams, Lord. But if they haven't received you as their Lord and Savior, I pray they do so now. So friend, if you're watching today and you like the gift that God has for you, just repeat it after me. Say it out loud and mean it with your heart. You say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe that you've risen from the dead and you're coming back for me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost and a hunger for the things of God. Give me a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I forgive everyone who's hurt me and I forgive myself. Fill me now with your love, your joy, and your peace. I'm saved, I'm forgiven, I'm born again, and I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Now, friend, if you said that prayer today, you truly are saved. You need to turn from your sin, run to God, always run to God. No matter how bad things get in your life or what storms you come up against, always run to God. Next thing, get yourself plugged in. You know, it's, it's, you know, they don't ever forsake the gathering of the believers. So find a good local church. Find a church community to get yourself plugged into. And when you go there, go to the front. Make a public confession that you are saved. Call somebody today. Pick up the phone because the, the Bible says, if you deny me before man, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. So you want to pick up the phone right now. Call a friend who's a Christian. Call your local church. Call your pastors. Hey, I just prayed this prayer. Call us right here at Alfano Ministries International. It's all, you can follow us on our website, thealfanos.com uh, or proverbstreetglobal.com. You can you can just go into the, the comments section. You can find us, follow us, and send us a message. If you see Werner, Tell him, hey, Werner, I, I was watching your podcast there, and I got saved. Then also get yourself baptized in water. You know, it's important to, to show that you're dying to the old man and you're being resurrected. And then the most important thing is ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. You know, put your hand on your belly and you say, fill me now with your Holy Spirit and your fire, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and then just let that river flow. Your, your, the Word says that, that out of your belly, will flow rivers of living water. And so if you've done that today, 
you're on a, you're on your path. You're going to a whole new level, and we're we're going to pray uh, peace and blessing over each and every one of the listeners here today. So, in closing, Vernon, is there anything you wanted to share? Any last last comments uh, for the for the people listening today? Yeah, but um, what he just said, Holy Spirit, is the number one thing. And then once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then you have to practice, practice, practice. And the more you practice and speak in tongues the closer you get to Jesus. And that's all of, uh, should be all of our desires to get closer to Jesus because the closer you get, the more he speaks to you, the more you listen, uh, the more you hear from you, and the more you will succeed because everything starts with the Holy Spirit because he guides you, directs you, he gives you witty ideas and all these things, it comes from the Holy Spirit, but you have to acknowledge him and, 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 And as I said, speak in tongues, tongues, tongues. And every time anything comes up, any time a thought pops in your head uh, about, you know, just a slight little thing where I hear like speaking, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues or something like this, then you just start speaking mm. until you get the thing to stop. Amen. But, and that helped me. And ever since I really got touched like five years ago, I, I sp- speak in tongues for a long time, but when I got touched like five y- years ago, that was at the, actually at the River Church in Tampa Bay, when I got touched by the Holy Spirit and set, really set on fire, things changed. And so the, my longing that I have now for the Holy Spirit uh, started out, I mean the real longing for the Holy Spirit started out back then. And uh, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger every day I wake up. It's the Holy Spirit and, and me, and we talk to each other like we are best. We are best friends, and I actually tell them always, Holy Spirit, you're my best friend, and you tell me what I need to know. And then, uh, <clears throat> if you cannot find a, a church, a local church around where, where you live, then uh, listen to the to the online or uh, do online uh, service at the River Church at Tampa Bay. Every Sunday morning in our area, it starts um, like <clears throat> in uh, Eastern time, it starts at 8.30 in the morning. And then uh, what this, this church does is unbelievable because they, they do like one hour praise and worship and it's not just blah, blah, blah. It's anointed praise and worship. And that's why you find the glory of God comes upon you and it brings you even closer to that that's awesome you know i could go all day with uh verner i mean obviously you know i, I we, we have a time frame for the show but i mean like just what yeah. he's done in his life you know the bible says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you this guy's lived an adventurous life i mean he's done barefoot water skiing and race car driving and still to this day i mean just out there getting it done and and living a great phenomenal life and you can see it all over him and um, and so just keep up the good work, you know, keep thank up the you. good work out here for the kingdom. And uh, for those of you listening, thank you so much. Sorry for the delay getting the podcast out, obviously, with the hurricane. Uh, it set me back a day. Um, but, um, hey, forgive me. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. I'm your host, Mark Alfano. Uh, tune in out until we see you again. This broadcast has been brought to you by friends and partners of Alfano Ministries International. Thank you for partnering with us today.